Here we are again, one more month, and I'm calling on my geeks. How do we know it's another month? Well, we definitely know we're in January, because my Star of Bethlehems, they're starting to wilt a bit. But it's great news, we're in 2024, and here is your December 2023 market report, coming up right after this. Yeah. Uh, here we go. <laughs> And here we are again, one month later, and we are ready for our January update for the December stats. And have I got some really good news for both buyers and sellers. So let's start off with the first thing. First thing is the Fed is expecting that interest rates are going to drop again sometime in January or early February. That's what they keep hinting. That's what they keep saying that our economy is back in a little bit more stability. So they feel like they can drop interest rates just a little bit. Might not be a lot, might only be a quarter of a percent, might be as much as a half percent, which would be amazing. But we are already seeing customers in the 6% rates, which is not bad. So most people now are at either the high sixes or the low sevens instead of the sevens and eights that we saw in 2023. So that's something to rejoice for both buyers and sellers. Why is that? Well, buyers, this means that you actually can buy more house. It means that those housing prices that have gone up in the last few years are now a little bit more affordable because actually interest rates impact your buying power far more than interest rates and debt to income are the two things that um, affect your buying rate more than almost anything else. House prices are actually less of a factor than interest rates and your debt to income. So if there are two advices we have for buyers right now, pay off any debt that you've got. Use that tax return you're going to get really soon here in February or March to pay off some old credit card bills or old bills that have been hanging out there. Get that debt to income down so that you are then eligible to buy a great home or to move up in your home if that's what you need. Sellers, get ready for a great market because here's the reality. Reality is with the interest rates already being in the high sixes, there are more buyers that are starting to come to the market even now in January and February. So let's take a look at some of those stats and show you what we're talking about. Even in December, we're going to go right to December here and you're going to see that in December, the um, list to sold prices. Now, this is a little bit interesting. Sellers are still listing their houses a little bit higher than they should be. And if you can see for Racine, the city of Racine, the list prices averaged at 210000 Now, that's the most or the highest list prices that we have seen. And one of the really good things that you should keep in mind with this, and let's take a look at this in a smaller frame here. And what you should see here on this in December, 210,000. So in August, it was 202. In September, 203, the average list price. October, 193. Sellers were getting much more reasonable in understanding that the market had changed. And in fact, in October, we actually saw that the list prices were, the average list price was lower than the average sold price by just a hair, which is the first time that's happened in a very long time. So, well, at least since things were going crazy. Um, so about a year plus since we've seen that happening. Now in November, list prices were still at 197. All of a sudden, because there's more confidence for sellers, apparently in December, they went to 210,000. But what happens when you overprice your home, what invariably happens is you get less for it. And this is evidenced by the average sale price in December was 172.7. So that's really interesting. When people started overpricing their houses, it didn't mean they were getting more for them. In fact, it looks like they were getting less for them based on the stats. So that's a really, really interesting stat to take a look at and pay attention to on a regular basis. Now, if you were in Mount Pleasant, it was even worse. The list of sale price in Mount Pleasant was 366. Wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. Except when you find out that in Mount Pleasant, the average sale price was $100,000 less. $100,000? That's a terrible, terrible jump. That means that sellers or agents, not sure which is to blame for this, but somebody's really overpricing their homes if they're only getting 266 as the average sale price in 
Mount Pleasant. Now, Caledonia, not quite so big of a gap, kind of like we're seeing. But still, in Caledonia, we're seeing overpricing happening. The average list price in Caledonia is $400,190, and the average sale price was $365,890. Now, on a percentage basis, that's very close to the same difference that we're seeing is seeing. Well, it's actually a better percentage difference. But 400 versus 365 still says that sellers, you're overpricing your homes on average. Let's keep those prices at the price they should be because otherwise, if you start listing them too high, you will actually get less for your house. As we can see in Racine, when that number went up to 210, the sale price actually dropped from 180 down to 172. So in November, we saw a sale price average of 180, but in December, 172. And that's because people are overpricing their homes. Now, let's move on to the year-on-year -year list to sold price. This gives us kind of a bigger overview of what the year was like. And first off, we're going to look at the sale to list. And this is for Racine. Of course, we only have the charts up for Racine, but I'll give you the numbers for Caledonia and Mount Pleasant. If you want the numbers for any other, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the sale to list price year-on-year. -year. In 2022, the sale to list price was at 93%. So sellers were only getting 93%. 3% of their sale to list price. Now, even though sellers were overlisting their house in December here, then it still is not that bad. So if you notice that in, Dece in December of 2023, though, the average sale to list price was 96%. So 96.1%. And you can see on this right here that the orange line of this is the sale to list price percentage in 2022 and the blue line is the sale to list percentage so even though it is a little bit we still have some unreasonable sellers not as unreasonable as in 2022 so that's really good and i think that's because in 2022 the change in the market was quite abrupt and people didn't realize what was going on they didn't realize that the market had changed and they were now we were still overpricing their houses from earlier in the year because it changed about July of 2022. So when you look at December, people are still overpricing, so they were only getting 93%. Now, if you look at the Mount Pleasant numbers for that same um, thing, sale to list 2022. So in 2022, the average was a 95.5%. That's actually not bad for a sale to list price. That means they were coming in pretty good. But in actually in 2020. Three, we were at 99% for sale to list. So well done overall um, in sale to list percentage wise. Now, that doesn't mean just these numbers. It means overall year on year as far as the percentages go. So definitely something to keep in mind. Caledonia, Caledonia did just fine because in 2022, the average sale to list price was 93% and now it's at 98.7%. So well done, Caledonia, in keeping your listing prices under control. All right, let's move on to the next slide here. And this is our days on market. And we're going to talk about how our days on market can really affect what's happening. So our days on market are, uh, for Racine, you can see that the days on market are, you know, pretty, pretty good. But the days on market are 20.4 for December of this year. Last year, Days on market, 36.6. So over a month, houses were on the market last year. Now they're selling in less than a month. They're not on the market, but 20 days for Racine. And that's why even that's why you can see on this chart, we don't want it to be going up. We actually want to see this downtrend on this um, on this particular uh, chart. So we want to see that downtrend. We want to see well, these sellers want to see that because it means their house isn't on the market for very long. But what's interesting is people think that your house not being on the market very long is a bad thing, a good thing. Actually, days on market, we want to see that number under a month as an average because there are some properties that sit out there for six months and you know sell right at the end or they sit out there for four months and they really raise the average for everybody else. So when you see a days on market as 20 overall for the market, that's pretty good because it means a reasonable seller and a seller who's working with within a good parameter is actually probably selling their house in about a week. So that should be what your expectation is of your agent, that your house should have an accepted offer within the first week or two of your listing. That is the That kind of keeps you in with that average of where you should be because you're balanced out by people who are out there for a really long time. So 
expectation though should be changed because in 2020, 2021, and even half of 2022, we saw this number as much, much higher or much, much lower. We saw people were kept selling their houses in like 24 hours. Now, on that topic, you should know that selling your house in 24 hours is a really bad idea. You should not necessarily take the first offer that you get on your house that fast. Now, if it's the first offer and it's the only offer you have within a week, okay, that's one thing because your house has been exposed to the market for a long enough time for everybody to have a shot at it. But 24 hours is not even enough time for everybody to get in and see your house. Really, anything less than two to three days in those top high markets was not good for sellers. And the reason it wasn't good for sellers, it was great for agents because agents were often what we call double popping or they were getting both sides of the transaction and keeping all the listing money for themselves. But sellers, if your house wasn't exposed on the market for two to three days and then you accepted an offer, you probably would have missed out on some of the other offers that may have come in. So definitely keep that in mind. Really, you don't want your days on market to be less than three. That's pretty much what you'd want it to be. Anywhere from three to 10 days is really in the acceptable range right now. But our days on market for Mount Pleasant, let's take a look at those numbers. The days on market for Mount Pleasant were 13 this last month. Wow. Houses in Mount Pleasant that are selling, they're selling fast. But then of course, they're at a $100,000 discount. So why not? Days on market in um, 2022, 35, which pretty much lines up with where Racine was in 2022 as well. But lastly, let's look at Caledonia. The one thing you can say about Caledonia is Caledonia stays really consistent. They're a very, they're a much more stable market in general. Um, in Caledonia, we see that the average days on market in 2022 was 31, and now they're 33.5. It's a negligible difference, which means there's really not much difference between 31 days on market or 33 and a half. That's just the luck of the draw for that particular month. We would like to see Caledonia's average days on market, though, drop a little bit. That generally is an indication that sellers are holding out a little longer than they necessarily should be. Like I said, a good house selling right now in any market, whether it's Mount Pleasant, Caledonia, anywhere in the Racine, Kenosha area, we're looking at anywhere from a three to 10 days. That's what you're looking for if you're for your days on market. All right, let's look at our next section here, which is our sold versus new listings. Now, the sold versus new listings chart, this one is all about um, how many new listings we have, and it plays into our last slide, which is about absorption rate. So our sold listings versus our new listings. So in December, there were 51 properties sold and there were 79 listed. That's actually a really good thing. And that is why you can see that that number is kind of holding a little steady. It did drop down to this number and we do really want to see, you know, we want to see it going up, but actually when we have 51 sold listings and 79 um, new listings, that actually gives us a really good spread of where we want things to be. We want to keep adding more new listings than we're selling. That's what's going to help our absorption rate. We will take a look at Mount Pleasant's sold listings versus new listings. And in Mount Pleasant, there were only 12 listings sold and there were 36 listed. That's actually, well, we don't want to see only 12 sold listings. That's really bad for Mount Pleasant. We actually need more listings in Mount Pleasant. But 12 versus 36, so three times as many properties were listed as were sold. That's a good ratio. But we really need to see it more to be like 90 something listed and 36 sold. That would make for a much healthier market in Mount Pleasant. We look at that number for Caledonia and the sold listings were 25 and the new listings were 44. Again, that's a really solid, that's a 50 50. So it would still be better though if we had those numbers up closer, the listed numbers on all of these should be closer to 100 every month. If we want to have a healthy market, we really need to have 100 houses listed in Caledonia. We need 100 listed in Mount Pleasant. We need 100 listed in Racine every single month just to get us back up to a healthy market. So with as few as we're getting, we're getting about half to a third of what we really need to. Um, now, obviously, Racine, 79, that was pretty close to that 100 mark. So that could be a really good thing. But we definitely want to see that going up. And why? Well, let's talk about the reason why. Because this is the absorption rate. 
So the absorption rate is how long how, how long will it take us to sell every listing we have in the market? So based on all the stats that we've covered today, the absorption rate in Racine right now is 1.25. Now, that is better than last month because, or last year, I should say. Last year, we only had 1.06. And that's a little bit scary. This is definitely better. We're trending in the right direction. Now, unfortunately, October and November, we actually saw 1.3 and we were trending in that direction. And then we started to go down to 1.25, but we haven't dropped significantly. So let's keep that trend up. In reality, buyers and, and sellers, to be honest, sellers, you do want more houses on the market because then your great house will stand out as the gem. So sellers, it doesn't hurt you to have more houses come on the market. Um, not really. Not if you're a fair and equitable seller. Not if you're someone that's not trying to screw somebody over. If you're a fair and equitable, great seller to work with and you're a reasonable person, you really want to have about three months of inventory. And right now we only have 1.25 and that can be kind of dangerous. Now, if I look at the Mount Pleasant absorption rate. Now that one is actually looking better because they had three times the amount listed versus sold. Their absorption rate shot up to 1.78, almost at two, which is awesome. Again, we want to see that as three or a little bit more, but at least they're trending in the right direction. Um, in if you look back at August, they had less than one month in August, and now we've got almost two months. So that's actually really good. What it does is it gives buyers a chance to breathe and make really good, strong offers. A lot of buyers are not going to make an offer on a property if they feel overly rushed because buying a home is a big deal. And if they make a bad offer, they rush into it, they're more likely to flake out on the offer. And that's when you have, that's why we're seeing a trend in the last six months of so many people making an offer and then retracting it after a week. Or they get to inspection and they get cold feet and they use any tiny little thing in the inspection to get out. It's not that the inspection was really all that bad. It's that they made a rash decision to put an offer on this house and then they pulled it off. Well, that's actually really bad for sellers because it makes it look like the problem was your house when the problem wasn't your house at all. And so we definitely want to see, we want to give buyers a little more breathing room so they can make a really good offer so they feel confident about their offer and they see themselves through the contract and they don't just use any little tiny thing to get out of it. So absorption rates, that's a really, really big deal. And we definitely want to see those absorption rates go up to three months. So let's take a look. So Mount Pleasant is at 1.78. Last year was only at 0.88. So that's definitely, that's almost an entire month more. And that's awesome. And in Caledonia, Again, like I said, we've got a really consistent market in Caledonia. And so in Caledonia, 1.61 is where they were last year. And now they're 1.78 on their absorption rate. So one month and three quarters, basically. And last year they were one month and two thirds. So not a significant difference there. So we still need Caledonia. We need Caledonia. We, and the real reason that we have that absorption rate is because we don't have enough listings coming to market. So again, it kind of goes back to the, we need to have about a hundred homes in Mount Pleasant and a hundred homes in Caledonia and a hundred homes in Racine listed every single month for us to get back to kind of a, a healthy, normal, really good, um, solid market, a market where buyers feel confident to buy and don't feel rushed into making bad decisions, where sellers are still getting great prices. See, that's the thing. When you have a three month absorption rate, you're still getting a great price for your house. And prices this year are not expected to trend down, even as these stats become stronger for buyers. In order for, in order for this to trend into the so to speak, the bad realm for sellers, you'd have to have over six months of inventory. So we are so far away from that. Anything at three months or less, um, or even three to four months, anywhere in that range, sellers, you're still going to see your house prices going up. You're just not going to see dramatic, crazy house prices. What you're going to see is a more reasonable market. You're going to see a more rational um, point of view on this. You're going to see people making good, strong decisions, and you're going to get really strong offers. And that's what every seller wants. Every seller wants a really good buyer. 
sellers want buyers that are going to pay the right price, but they also want buyers who are going to stick with the contract, especially sellers. If you are moving on to another house for you and you need the money from the sale of your house to move forward, you really don't want that contract falling apart because then the one you're buying could be falling apart as well because of it. And that can be absolutely devastating. In fact, we spoke to a couple of people over the weekend um, that were looking to relist their house. They were listed last year with another agent. It didn't go very well because a plan wasn't put in place. And so we're going to sit down with a couple of them and put a really good plan in place to get their home on the market at a fair, great price for them, but also make sure that they get their home on the market with great marketing and get it sold easily, simply, and, you know, not with a lot of angst and not with a lot of problems and troubles. So great pricing. So we're actually trending in the right direction in Racine anyway. So the thing about this area is you got to pay attention to the data. The data is always going to tell you until we get to that six months beyond absorption rate. Don't worry about foreclosures. Don't worry about that's not happening right now. Not in this area. It might be happening in other areas of the country, but it is not happening in the Racine market, not even in the Kenosha market or the Milwaukee market, if you're planning to move to either of those directionally. Um, so don't worry about that. Now, if we did not cover the stats for your your particular area, like let's say you live in Sturdivant, we are happy to do those. We can pull those really quickly. Just shoot us an email at, or shoot me an email at Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. Or you can send us a text at 262-676-2383. All I need on that text is for you to say what municipality you want. I will tell you stats, pay, we usually only do them as a year on year basis. And that's because there are so very few houses in that area. Sturdivant and Windpoint and North Bay, um, Elmwood Park, all of those. We look at the year on year stats more. Uh, sort of it, we could probably do the month on month. It depends. I'll have to look at, I'll have to look at how much is selling there. They've been kind of on the edge of, uh, it's not really accurate month on month. Anybody who knows about stats and you know, understand data, the smaller your sampling, the less, um, the less accurate your results are. Um, so that's one of the reasons we don't cover them in this broadcast. But if you do want to know your specific, if you're out in Dover or Burlington or any other area in Racine County, do feel free to hit us up for those stats. So thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions, do put them in the comments. We do respond to any questions in the comments. Absolutely. One other thing I wanted to mention before we go today is in January, keep your eyes peeled because we are going to have a bonus episode by the end of January. I'm going to do a year on year for the whole of Racine, not just going to do the last couple of months like we normally do, not just the quarter or things like that where we compare. We're actually going to compare the full year. I'm going to compare the full year, the stats of a kind of a 2023 in review. Thanks for joining us today. Speak to you soon. If you got value from this video, do us a favor and click like. If you'd like to see more of the same, then subscribe and turn on that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our content. As always, we love to hear from you. So leave us a comment below and we will absolutely respond. We'd love to get your feedback. And if you have ideas for content that you'd like to see, we absolutely welcome them. Have a great day. Bye for now.